Hello artist! Welcome to another video. If you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Irit. I'm an intuitive mixed media artist based in Austria in Europe. I love all things colorful and artsy and on my channel I share those adventures with you. If you are not new here, then thank you for sticking with me and being here for this uh, colorful fun painting process. So today I'm going to share with you how I created this piece from start to finish. It's a little bit sped up so that the video is not too long, but I would love to know if you prefer this to be completely in real time. Uh, and, you know, if you enjoy watching longer videos, this one is 20 minutes, which I think is kind of at least for me, I find that this is a good length. It's long enough to grab a cup of coffee and really enjoy, but it's not too long that, you know, I can usually watch a 20 minute video in like one sitting. But I would love to hear your opinion. Also, I am considering doing a little bit of a studio makeover. And yeah, let me know if this is something you're interested in because that is definitely, I need a bit of motivating, not because I'm not motivated to do it. I'm very motivated. I'm just also quite lazy. <laughs> so <laughs> I, um, yeah, if there is like a lot of interest, then it definitely would push me to taking this on. Okay. I'm sorry. I've been away for a few weeks. I was abroad there was easter vacation all kinds of things going on but now i'm back and hopefully i can go back to posting at least uh, a new video every week and it is always also for me despite the fact that i have been painting very very regularly for the past probably six years at least uh, it's still hard for me to get back into it when I'm away. And so I really developed these kind of go-to processes processes <laughs> that I can fall back onto when I struggle to get back into my creative routine. And I share all of this in detail, uh, especially in my course, The Joyful Art Habit, uh, so if you took that course, you know what I mean. And if you didn't, then I will put a link below. And it's all about getting into the habit of painting daily with tons and of like instructions and inspiration. But I don't want to talk about that today. I want to talk about uh, this painting. So using my go to products, which I will link below and go to subjects and go to techniques. This is the best way that I have found to um, create with joy and ease. So I like to start my watercolor paintings actually with pastels and I love Karen Dash's Neo pastels. These are Neo color, sorry, Neo color. I think there's also a Neo pastel from Schmincke or something, but these are Neo color. Um, Neo color come in one and two, two different kinds. One is water resistant, which is my favorite formula, uh, but two is water soluble and it also comes in more colors for some reason. It is also a lot more popular than the Neo color ones. I think just because it's very, very versatile. I love them both. And especially the reason that I love them is because they are the least messy pastels you'll ever use. And so if you are attracted to the idea of, the, of pastels, which I just love pastels uh, because they tend to be so pigmented and deposit a lot of product. So you get, you get kind of a lot of, how do I say? It's, it's very easy to get a lot of color on your paper or canvas when you use pastels. However, soft pastels are very like powdery and you need special surfaces and you need to set them. And then oil pastels are very oily and can get also kind of messy. And you also need to set them because they will not dry ever. And so wax pastels are kind of that perfect Goldilocks, mixed media friendly, I would say also messy artist friendly supply that really doesn't need any 
special handling. And so I really, really love it. It's one of my go-to products that I have been praising for years and years and years. And I always say that it's, to me, it seems like it's kind of those, one of those unicorn products in the art world that everyone just loves because it's so good. So yeah, okay, enough about those. But the reason I like uh, to use them is you can see, I can make this really fast sketch in all kinds of colors, uh, which is why I really enjoy using colorful pastels instead of just like a, you know, a gray pencil or something. And those lines are going to show in the final piece because they're resisting the watercolor. They also act as a sort of paint by numbers for me. And once all of those sketches are done, I feel like I can just relax and enjoy and apply pretty colors because I already have the composition mostly set up and I already have kind of designated areas for each color. And so this makes the, the rest of the process beyond that initial sketch, which usually takes me, I would guess, around five minutes, probably something like that. That makes everything that comes after it really, really relaxing for me because there's no analysis paralysis. There's not a lot of decision making once I get through that initial sketch. And that is something that my brain absolutely loves. I get to immerse myself in color and shape and, you know, just like creating these stains of beautiful watercolor. And I add a lot of splatters because that adds a lot of like texture. And the whole thing just turns into this celebration of marks and color, and tone on tone, and all the things that I love about making art, and the therapeutical effect of color, and art, and watercolors. Also, it still is, I think, I I've been painting a lot with acrylics lately, and hopefully I can share that with you, because it's mostly been on like large canvases, and I still haven't perfected the filming process of creating those canvases. But there is something that is so easy about watercolors. And also you can see on the right side, I have my watercolor palette and on the left, I have my gouache palette and I really enjoy mixing both of them. I'm hoping to set up a little, um, very compact palette with both of these and see how that works for me. But it's just so easy, you know, with acrylics, unless you have one of those like stay wet, palettes you have to squeeze out paint every time you want to paint and then you have to mix the colors and if you're someone like me that really enjoys using lots of colors then that whole process just takes so much time and space and effort and you know I just want to spend my time painting so watercolors are really the best medium that I have found for the messy brain that struggles to make decisions and struggles with those prep steps before, like, I just want, if I have time, and especially if I have, if, if my brain is just brimming with just, you know, noise, <laughs> that's going to say voices, <laughs> but this is so easy with a watercolor palette. It's so easy. And I still do mix a lot of colors. Uh, you might notice that I actually don't have a lot of neutrals in my palette. I really prefer to mix my own neutrals with a couple of exceptions. I really like to have um, buff titanium in my palette. I actually have in my watercolor palette, I actually have the Daniel Smith gouache buff titanium. From my experience till now, Daniel Smith has made an amazing job with formulating their gouache paints. They do dry similarly to other gouache paints, which the problem with gouache paints, if you're not familiar, I feel like gouache paint is best used. And I'm talking about traditional gouache, not acrylic gouache, which is just acrylic paint with a matte 
finish. So not that. Traditional gouache, which is water soluble, it's sometimes called opaque watercolor. It's not completely accurate, uh, but it gives you, a, a, I think, a, a good idea of what it is. So the thing with gouache, I think it's used best when you just squeeze it out of the tube and use it fresh. But that takes me personally back again to that having to set up things and squeeze out a lot of colors um, and just delaying that actual painting process. So I prefer to use gouache like I use watercolors, which is squeezed into wells, as you can see here uh, in my palette on the left side, and try to keep it moistened um, and use it then reconstituted and rewetted. And for the most part, it works well. However, you will see after a few months that some brands more than others will get dry and crumbly and then you'll have these like lumps of dried gouache paint traveling in your palette and it can get messy. From the brands that I have tried, which are Royal Talents, Holbein, Windsor Newton, Daniel Smith, and I think I think that's um, the majority. Daniel Smith has the best formulation. It dries out the least and it is very, very easy to re-wet. And so I really love them. Sadly, they're also, I think, the most expensive ones. Um, Windsor & Newton is a lot cheaper. I think Holbein as well. And where I am, Royal Talents is really, really affordable. There's also Schmincke. I haven't really found colors that excite me. I really find that um, when it comes to color, usually between Windsor & Newton and Holbein, I can get most of the colors that I enjoy. But... Um, I think Holbein and especially, they tend to really, really dry out. Uh, Windsor Newton as well after some time. So, yeah. So if you want to try gouache and you think you will use it kind of in your watercolor palette or more like watercolors, meaning squeeze the paint out, let it dry, and then re-wet it and reconstitute it, I would recommend maybe get like a few colors from Daniel Smith. Or if you want to get into gouache and you're not, you know, you don't know if you like it, just get white gouache and use it with, wa with your watercolors. It is very, very similar. Okay, so I've done my first layer. I let things dry. And now I'm going back again with watercolors just to create a little bit more interest, a little bit more texture, patterns, brush strokes, just to make things um, more interesting. I usually don't do more than a couple of layers of watercolors, especially since I have incorporated pastels and pencils into my watercolor painting routine because I find that I can get all the effects that I want and all the details that I want um, much more easily using mixed media as opposed to being a watercolor purist. When I started my watercolor journey, you know, I think like most beginners, you trust people with more experience as you should. Um, of course, you know, when you're starting out, you should learn from other people because they have uh, a lot of experience and can teach you a lot. But it took me probably a few years to realize that the look that was exciting to me and the process that was exciting to me, um, to get that or to go there, I needed to incorporate other mediums in my paintings, such as pastels and pencils. Those are the main ones that I use with watercolors. And it really transformed my artwork and I feel helped me create my signature style. Uh, and that is really, really exciting. I think that is the step where your art journey becomes, it's like next level, right? And I don't want to say this to discourage anyone. It took me years to get here. And, you know, if you spend time on social media, it sometimes can really discourage you and you know you fall into that trap of like seeing what other people are doing and I always see artists that seem 
to do their thing and create with ease so effortlessly. And many times it's like really young artists. And for me, it took me a long time. It took me a long time. It took me years. I think some of it was probably due to that insecurity of starting out in art, especially at a later age. Um, You know, even though I sketched a lot and painted a lot as a teenager and probably also preteen, Um, In my 20s and beginning of my 30s, I didn't do anything in art. And so I came back to it in my probably, I would say, mid, late 30s. Uh, I'm now 44. And so I want to give you like words of encouragement, because for me, for uh, let's say those first few years, It was really lovely and enjoyable to paint with watercolors and to get into that world and especially loose watercolors. But there was always a pretty strong element of frustration and the desire to have my own style. Something about, you know, following other people's tutorials and recreating other people's artwork just... It, it wasn't satisfying in the way that creating something that is more authentic and original is, at least for me. And I know not everyone is in that step and it doesn't have to be something you aspire to. Um, you know, if you follow tutorials and enjoy the process and this is your happy place, I'm 100% for that and I, you know, encourage you to do what you enjoy. But if you are on that journey of finding your voice and creating authentic art, um, then, you know, I, I feel you. That is also my journey. And when you start getting to that, you know, I call it the promised land, right? That place where you feel like you're, you know, even though I can't tell you, you know, this is it and my style won't change, but I'm there and I know what to do. And a lot of that is kind of believing in yourself and listening to yourself and listening to what feels good for you and what feels right. And a lot of it is unlearning things. Even if a hundred other artists swear by a certain technique or a certain color palette, or, you know, you must have these colors in your palette or anything like that. It doesn't mean that it'll work for you. And for every rule in art, there are people who successfully break it. So I really encourage you to do your own thing and really develop that mindfulness and playfulness to try new things. And I think the more you paint and kind of really find your niche, then sometimes that play is actually... It won't look so different to people from the outside, but to yourself, it'll be a big change. So for example, what I'm doing here with the pencils, it's quite different than what I've been doing in my last few dozen or more paintings. It's just a little bit more messy, a little less organized. You can look at previous uh, painting process and you'll see that the pencil part is a lot more structured. And this time I just felt I wanted to do this messier Lee. <laughs> That's not a word. <laughs> In a more messy uh, fashion. And I love it. And I had the best time creating this. And here are some close-ups. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope I can post uh, videos again regularly. I will see you soon. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed this and also if you prefer even longer videos than this, uh, because I have no problem talking about all things art for longer, (laughs) but (laughs) I'm just not sure that, you know, people have the time to watch half hour, 40 minute uh, art video, but I love your opinion. Look at those neon touches. That's another thing I'm really into, kind of bursts of neon, neon fluorescent colors. So thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye.